Hey guys, Mishka here. Alright, uh, we're going to talk about how to increase your DPS. Um, so I'm going to be going over the four DPS classes, the Shaman, Ranger, Mage, and Scoundrel. Uh, we're going to talk about things you can do for the, each individual class, and then kind of overall global ways to increase your DPS. So we're going to start with Shaman. Uh, so first things first, these are the four totems that I use to get maximum DPS. We have Lava, Stun, Lightning, and Fire. For the Talents, I went all on the left side. Um, and that's fairly important because each of those is going to increase your DPS. Um, I go over that in my Shaman videos. Um, so let's just go ahead and talk about like where do we position ourselves. Shaman is a fairly easy class to um, to get maximum DPS. So because of our strikes twice, when your lightning orb crits, it instantly respawns, and the first orb generated by a totem is guaranteed to crit. That means that you get a a, a pretty good. Um, you can get a pretty good stream of lightnings. So what do I mean by a pretty good stream of lightnings? I mean, when you start off and you put the lightning totem down, you can get several lightnings in a row like that, right? That was what, five lightnings in a row? That's pretty awesome, right? Now it's not the first orb generated, so it's not gonna crit, but the first like four or five, you can get a, a pretty good string consistently of just lightning, 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 lightning. So what does that mean as far as like, how do we increase our DPS? That means if you stand super close, right? When we throw our lightnings, well, we only got two, right? If we scoot back a bit, like I was before, uh, this marks 15 meters. So I'm standing at about 12, 13 meters away. With all of them in the air like that, it keeps spawning until the first one hits, right? So you can get four or five um, of those lightnings in a row. Now, obviously, you put them all down, so right, we throw our lightning totem, we put all of these down, and check this out, right? Boom, 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 just a bunch of damage all at once, right? And then we keep hitting it with everything, and then as soon as our totems respawn, we're going to throw them back down, because every time we throw our totems down, the first orb generated is guaranteed to crit. And that's that's pretty much it, as far as like, whenever I play Shaman, how do I increase my DPS? I drop the totems as fast as I can on respawn, Right. Um, yeah, I'll move around a little bit so that I can see my totems, drop them with one hand, throw with the other hand. Sorry about that, OVR just uh, pulled up my desktop. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for Shaman. Super, super easy, right? Again, all talents on the left. Those are the four totems. I toss them down on cooldown because first orb guaranteed by a, first orb generated by a totem is guaranteed to crit. So if you just toss them down on cooldown, you're going to be getting crit after crit after crit. Uh, the Lava Totem, of course, increases the damage that you do, uh, and then because they're weakened, the Fireball will apply a dot, so you're just stacking as much damage as possible. For Shaman, that's pretty much it. Super easy. Alright, let's talk about, um, we'll go to Mage last since that's kind of the hardest one to, to talk about. We're gonna talk about Scoundrel now. So Scoundrel, uh, there are really two things in my mind that, that people don't really focus on all the time. That will increase your dps first one is your curved shot okay rank three cool the curved shot is going to drastically and i mean drastically increase your dps the last time i did the test the difference between a no rank and a rank five is about 60 percent so if i shoot that's 8k right let's get back over here so that we get a so that's a rank five that was a crit so we go from 8k to 14.7k that's a big difference, right? Especially when you're shooting a lot or if you're getting crits, um, that's gonna you know, add up real fast. So first thing, get those rank shots. I recommend trying to stay at a rank five. If you can't get a rank five, you know, you're getting rank fours, that's fine. Um, but I, I try not to go below a rank four. Uh, the second thing is using your cards, right? Your cards are super important. Um, knowing what to use, when to use them. Uh, my general rule of thumb is I'm going to burn everything except for a poison a flame and sometimes a flint um, so a flint will duplicate the next card in um, i'm going to store this uh, whenever i burn an ice card i like to use a flame card with it because that's going to increase the damage that you do so 52.3k and that was without any rank shots i don't think that was a crit i didn't check to see if that was a crit because i didn't look at the numbers but again 52k that's without any like bonus damage from the curve shot or anything, you can stack damage real fast. Um, poison, right? If I burn a flint card, that's going to duplicate the poison card in my deck. So there's another poison. Now we have two poison stacks on it, and I'm doing way more damage. Uh, I tend to burn the light card because I don't 
usually need to heal myself. Um, burn the flame card because I get enough crits as is. Um, nope, I just used that one. Shouldn't have used it. Should have burned it. Burn. Get your curve shots. That's that's pretty much it. Um, Scott and Lava Wheel both have great, great videos on Scoundrel. They both have, I think, different rotations. I think Lava focuses more on the flame card and Scott focuses more on the poison. Uh, I kind of do both. I burn everything, like I said, except for poison and flame. So there's your poison. Boom. Right, I get the poison. Right, look at that damage start stacking up here. Burn that. Let's hope we get a flame. Nope, flint. I'm going to store that because I like that. Now we'll store that. Ugh. Get that curve shot over there. Pew. Poison. Yeah, why not? Poison's cool. Right, I mean, that damage can start stacking up super fast if you do things right. So here we go. Oh, I didn't get to see what that damage dealt. But um, yeah, do your curve shots. Do your curve shots. Do your curved shots. And then uh, go to the back of your book. Look at what the cards do and figure out good strategies for that. Yeah, boom, right? This will tell you what each card does. And this will tell you what happens when you burn those cards. You got to learn that. That's a huge part of it. Um, you'll drastically increase your DPS once you figure out the strategies. Again, I'll link to Scott and Lava Wheels videos down below. Uh, here we go. Ranger, my pride and joy, my favorite. So the the biggest thing that I see that people do, I'm not going to say wrong, but that lower their, their DPS is they play what I call a melee ranger. They sit here, right, and they do damage from close range. Now I'm doing, what, 17k a shot, right? Um, I got a bleed there. Ooh, yay. If I crit or if I hit a weak point, I do a little bit more damage. But we're looking at 17 to 18k per shot. So again, this is my marker for 15 meters. If I go past 15 meters, every time I hit, I will fill up one of these globes, right? You see that globe start to fill up, right? Notice that I'm doing significantly more damage now, right? Each of my shots is doing nearly 30K. So what's going on? Each of these globes is roughly 10% extra damage. Now, if I go even further to 30 meters, because I have the talent, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, arrow sight, shots from 30 meters, greater than 30 meters, gain the damage boost. That's an additional 10% damage. So I know it's hard to see, but each of my arrows is dealing, looks like 33k, 46k, 33k, so yeah, 33k on a normal shot, right? 46k. And then, of course, if I, you know, do something drastic like that, that's 142k with a single arrow. That's huge. That is a big part. That is, like, the number one thing that I see people do. Again, I'm not going to say wrong because you play the game how you feel like it. If you're a ranger and you want to be melee DPS, that's fine. Go for it. Um, but if you want to increase your damage, you have to understand this is the big part of it right here, those globes. So make sure you're standing at least 15 meters back so that you do get that... Um, that 10% damage boost per globe. And then again, I play 30 meters. So I go with Aerosight. That's a total of 70% extra damage for standing far away. All right. And last but not least, Mage. So how do we get better DPS with Mage? Well, obviously the first thing is practice, right? Be able to cast your spells. Um, if you can't cast a Fireball, you're not going to be able to do much damage. If you can't cast Frost, right? No bueno. Um, so learn the spells, right? Learn how to cast the runes. You can get perfect casts. Oop. Perfect casts. Perfect casts. There we go. Even better. Right? Uh, the closer you can get to what the game is looking for, the better. Once you learn how to do the spells, then you can start working on shortcuts. So like the D method, right? I'm not good at the D method because I don't practice it anymore. There we go. Or uh, Bucky's Pretzel, right? That's what I use. So I use Bucky's Pretzel for Fireball, and I use a P for Frost. Fire, Frost, Fire, Frost. Learning shortcuts will help, right? But it's not necessarily about the speed. It's about the accuracy. Um, if, if you go super fast, but you pop every now and then, right? So like I'm trying to go fast, I'm trying to go accurate, but I'm popping every now and then. My damage is going to be significantly lower than if I slow down and I focus on getting everything proper. 
So don't worry about speed at the start. Worry about accuracy. Worry about precision. Make sure you can actually get those spells. Uh, and then the second thing, and this is super important. This is something that not a lot of mages do. This fireball spam right here, right, that you see a lot of mages do, it's visually very impressive, yes, but this is not how you get maximum DPS, not as a mage. If you want maximum DPS, you have to do your rotation mage. So you're looking at, you know, affliction, frost, a couple fires, right? Throw another affliction, throw a frost, and a couple more fires, right? Now, why does this deal more damage than a straight fire spam? Well, there's a couple reasons. One, with two afflictions on, you have two weakness stacks. Those weakness stacks mean that the damage is taking another 10% extra damage from all sources. So you're now dealing 10% extra damage. Um, with Frost, because I have an Ice Heart weapon, I'm dealing another 5% damage. Okay. On top of that, uh, with Selfish Streak, after you cast three spells in a row without missing, you deal an extra damage. Right. So keep, like I said, the consistency. Don't pop your spells. Runic Diversity, casting three spells in a row from different runic types, increases the damage of the third spell by 20%. So when I'm doing these fireballs, right, these are all the same type of spell. But then I launch an Affliction, then I launch a Frost, that Frost gets a damage boost. So I'm throwing some fires, right, I'm not missing, so every third spell is getting a damage boost. Then I throw an Affliction, then a Frost, right? That frost gets a damage boost. And again, I'm also getting the boost from the afflictions. I'm getting the boost from the frost for the ice heart. I'm getting the boost for selfish streak. I'm getting the boost for ruining diversity, right? We're talking about a lot of extra damage. Um, and Richlith has a beautiful video um, that talks about the rotation mage. And again, I will leave a link in the description below. Um, as far as like triplicity or contamination goes, I don't really bother with either of them. Triplicity I'll play with um, if there's a boss with downtime. You know, I'll try to get some runes up, so if he's not taking much damage, I'll, I'll play around, I'll try to get some runes going. I am failing my spells miserably. Please ignore how awful I am at mage. So I'll try to get some, you know, some rune, some uh, tiles, and then I'll go ham on fireballs. But again, that's not going to be maximum DPS. We're looking at rotations. It's just really cool, visually. So that's each individual class. Now let's talk about, like, global ways to increase your damage. Uh, the first one, obviously, get higher level weapons, right? All of my weapons are plus 6, 30 plus 6. Um, each time that you get a 30 plus whatever weapon, your damage is going to go up. Each plus number is approximately 5% extra damage. Now, that doesn't mean that this is like 30% extra damage over a flat 30. The 30 plus 1 is 5% over the 30 plus 1. Uh, the, the flat 30. The 30 plus 2 is 5% over the 30 plus 1. So there's a little bit of like math that goes into it i don't believe it's a flat 30 percent i think it's just it like compounds or whatever the mathematical number is i'm not smart enough to figure that out so that's the first thing right get higher level weapons if possible um the second thing is tiles tiles are very very important it's a potential 30 percent increase to your damage now what are tiles they're basically custom enchantments that reward you for doing things uh, for, for playing the class in a certain way so like my tiles here Let's see if I can find one that I understand. Uh, this is so many hits per second, I believe. That's a fireball. That's healing. Uh, that's affliction. That's frost. That's fire. So if I get an affliction tick, a frost, and then a fireball, it should activate my tiles. Let's see if I can get those. Let's see. Affliction, frost, fire. Affliction, frost, fire. There's my tiles. Um, you're going to see... Let's do that again. Affliction, frost, fire... So you see that right there, those are my tiles, that gives me a damage increase. Um, and they last anywhere from like three to I think like six seconds, but you can you can get them up. Um, you can get a lot of them to pop. So we're gonna see a few. There we go, there's two up right now. Oop, I popped, let's try that again. We're gonna throw some fireballs, I think I have some fire. Yeah, see we have a whole bunch of tiles procking. Uh, you can only have three active at once, so you can only get you know 30% extra damage and there's interference and all, but uh, getting tiles that represent the way that you play your class will drastically increase your damage. I do have a video on tile sets. Uh, I'll link that in the description. I'm going to have a lot of links in the description. So higher level weapons. We went over play styles, um, tiles. Uh, next thing, affixes. Right? So for instance, on my mage, I have projectile damage, crit chance. Projectile damage, crit chance. Projectile damage, crit chance. Projectile damage, crit chance. Why do I have that? Because your spells are considered projectiles, right? 
So every time that I launch one of my spells, it deals another 4% damage because I have 4 projectile damage increases. I also have an additional 4% chance to crit. Why do I have that? Because a crit is 50% extra damage. And as a rune mage, I shoot a lot of spells, and I shoot them pretty fast. Um, I'm looking at like 2 to 3 spells a second, so that's a lot of potential crits. Um, and then for rings, for the most part, scavenged ring, elite hunter, empowered. Two scavenged rings, elite hunter, empowered. There is a, a case on ranger where we're not going to do that, but I'll get into that later. Um, elite hunter, you deal extra damage to elite enemies, and empowered, I believe, increases either your crit chance or your crit damage. I'm not sure which one. Um, people who are smarter than me and have done the math will correct me if I'm wrong. Um... Let's see, Scoundrel, my fix is crit damage, projectile damage. You're, gonna, you're not going to need crit chance because you're going to be critting all the time anyway. Um, because you're critting, you're going to want crit damage, right? If you got 4 plus 2%, that's plus 8% crit damage. That's a lot of crit damage. Plus the 4% projectile damage, you're hitting a lot of damage. You're stacking everything right there. Um, let's see, Shaman. Yeah, I, had that, I hate that bug. Shaman, I'm looking at crit damage, crit chance. There is a you know an argument to be made for projectile damage. I haven't done the math, so I don't know which one's better. But this is just what I go with, um, because again, when lightning crits, you get another lightning. So I like the idea of forcing as much lightning as possible. Um, and then ranger, ranger, we're looking at crit chance, projectile damage. Um, pretty much the same reason that we do for mage. Uh, your arrows are projectiles. Pew! I'm not left-handed. Um, your arrows are projectiles, so that's damage, and then crit, you know, we can hit some pretty high numbers. If you crit on those high numbers, you can do a lot of damage. I think I had like 150k shot earlier, um, so that's a good example of that. Now, I have a different rings on my ranger, all right? I've got a chaotic signet. Same affixes, elite hunter empowered, but it's a different ring. Why do I do that? Because I stack wisdom on ranger. You can see it's plus 75 wisdom, plus 75 wisdom. That's 150 wisdom which um, roughly translates to a 10% faster supercharge. On top of that, I have my Bracer of Wisdom. And then uh, when I get my plus six armor, I'm looking at potentially changing crit chance to supercharge. And the reason I do that is because the ultimate for the Ranger um, increases your damage by about 81%, which is pretty significant. So if you can get your ult up a lot, and you can get it up fast, you do a lot of damage. And I mean a stupid a lot of damage. Like, I've sustained over 100k with crappy potions. Um, so you see, it's, it's, it's building up at a pretty moderate rate. Um, but if I stack everything really, really hard, it goes up super fast. So, uh, tiles, fixes. Um, we went over the way to do each class to get maximum DPS that I found, at least. Again, this is my experience. I'm not saying this is the end-all, be-all. I'm saying this is how I get my max DPS. Um, I think that's pretty much everything... Uh, Ranger, stay back, Mage, Rotation, Shaman. Yeah, Shaman, get that distance right. Like I said, it's like 12 to 13 meters. If this is my 15 meter mark, I'm like usually right here to get those crits for Lightning. Scoundrel, get your curve shots, fixes and everything. Um, last but not least, uh, Potions. Potions will help. Uh, strength Potions will increase your physical damage, which for Rangers means your normal arrows. For Scoundrel means your normal bullets. Um, Shaman and Mage doesn't have to worry about it. Intel is all magical attacks. I believe that includes the cards for Scoundrel. Um, it includes the piercing and poison and fire rain arrow for Ranger. Pretty much all your specialty arrows are magical. Um, all your spells and projectiles for Shaman and Mage are going to be magical. Your critical potions obviously increase your crit chance. That's going to help because, again, crits are 50% extra damage. Uh, vitality, it'll help keep you alive longer, perhaps. Um, but it's not really going to increase damage. And the Supercharger Potion for Ranger, amazing. Everything else, eh, because um, Mage Super, eh. Uh, having Rupert is awesome, so go ahead and do it for Rupert. You know, Rupert doesn't do much damage, but morale boost. Uh, Scoundrel, if you're not good at hitting rank 5 shots, you might want to consider boosting your Super, because that's an automatic rank 5 if you hit it with your Super. So that's pretty much it. Um, just some quick tips to help increase your DPS. 
Um, mostly I wanted to focus on Ranger and Scoundrel because that's the, the two that I see where people are like right up here trying to get maximum damage like this. It's not going to happen. Make sure you're filling up those globes. Get at least 15 meters away. If you don't want to play 30 meter Ranger, I understand because uh, this is a pretty significant distance. And when you get those crit points, it can be hard to hit them. Um, but you can get it with practice. So yeah, that was 155k hit without a crit. So Ranger can spike damage. That's pretty much it. That's all. Um, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in there. And um, till next time, happy hunting. Oh, where's my mouse? There it is.